It's a good question, and um, in, I I'm not sure that I've, I can think of an area where there has been such a huge gap between the experimental evidence and the clini clinical evidence. I mean, reperfusion injury is complex, and it's, it's very complex pathophysiologically. There are a lot of processes, and there are a lot of potential targets. And uh, there are some people that have disputed, actually, whether reperfusion injury is really clinically relevant. I think it is. And um, after a wealth of animal studies that are all positive, basically none of the clinical trials have uh, reached their primary endpoint. It's been a big agenda with disappointing results. And so the question is why? And uh, the most correct answer is we don't really know. But I think there are a number of explanations. First of all, we have to accept that uh, dogs and cats are not the same as humans. I mean, species different are very different. Um, differences in collaterals on, in, in between species may have an effect. Uh, the other reason why I think there's a big difference is in a animal, in the animal experimental model, you create an infarction by putting a ligature on a virgin artery and then you release it. Myocardial infarction in the patient is very different because it's an atherosclerotic coronary artery, there's thrombus there, uh, thrombus dissolves, reforms. Um, it's a very, it's a different model actually, it's a different process. Um, I think collaterals, um, uh, uh, differences in collaterals play a role. I think uh, species difference is a major factor. Um, and I think it's a different pathological process. So we probably need uh, a better animal model, uh, which we don't have at the moment, and that would be an animal model of an atherosclerotic uh, artery that is subject to myocardial infarction. Bottom line is, big agenda, unimpressive results. Yes, there are. There are a number of ongoing trials and a number of uh, different compounds. The one I still think carries a great deal of promise is the phenomenon of ischemic preconditioning and particularly remote ischemic preconditioning. Now there have been some trials uh, of ischemic preconditioning that have turned out to be neutral, but I think there's some technical explanations in the design of the trials that account for the fact that they're neutral. So I think that's an area that is still alive. I won't say it's alive and well, but it is alive and interesting and, and needs to be developed further. And that personally I think is the most um, probably the most interesting approach to modifying reperfusion injury. I mean, if we could, if we really could modify it, it could have a big impact uh, on the size of an infarction and the ultimate prognosis.